Your body is trying to tell you that you're overtraining. So you better listen up runners. This video is my amateur opinion and my experience with running and getting injured. Like I'm no doctor. I'm just, I'm not a coach. I'm just an amateur runner training to run a hundred miler. And I have a few things to say on the topic. So here are the signs and symptoms that running too hard, too much, too often, too fast, that may sideline your running goals. But how about running slow using the Maffetone method? To become a better runner, you need to strategically push yourself out of your comfort zone. That's why runners do speed workouts, long runs. They stress the body beyond what it's used to. It forces you to adapt and to get stronger. This process involves breaking down muscle tissues, damaging cells. You train and break the body down so it must be able to build itself up better than before. That rebuilding isn't happening during your workout though. It happens during recovery. When you don't prioritize rest and recovery and to continue to put more stress on your body, it will eventually break down and your performance is going to suffer. That's called overtraining. Over the last 90 days, I've been running a lot and I have more to say about that on next Sunday's video. So please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already at the bell icon not to miss out on the videos when I post them. True overtraining occurs over months, but in the short term, it may only be days and weeks that you may be dealing with non-functional overreaching, according to research published in the Journal of Sports and Health. While true overtraining may not be as common as non-functional overreaching, one older study published in the uh, International Journal of Sports and Medication found that around 60% of elite female runners and 33% of non-elite female runners will deal with overtraining at least once in their lives. And look, here's the thing guys, we overtrain just as much as the females do. So get it out of your head. <laughs> It happens to all of us. Many athletes use the term non-functional overreaching and overtraining interchangeably. They have some similar symptoms and non-functional overreaching can lead to overtraining. But non-functional overreaching can typically be relieved by days or weeks of reduced training rest and adequate calorie intake. While true overtraining symptom can last months or even years, I've seen ultra marathoners come and go over the years that I've been following in the sport and I don't want that to happen to me. So either way, constant accumulative stress without adequate recovery is a slippery downward slope and your body will give you plenty of signs that you're in need of some R&R, just like my body's been telling me. Here are some signs and symptoms of overtraining. First, you'll likely experience training related symptoms, plateau or decline in performance, you have depleted energy stores, an increased perception of effort in training, <laughs> unusual feelings of heaviness, stiffness, or soreness in the muscles, or reoccurring injuries. What's happening here is that your body is never fully recovering from a single workout. And because it can't ever get back to its homeostasis, AKA relative stable equilibrium, you're starting each subsequent workout in a deficit. A decrease in performance is a result of poor to no recovery in the body. Heaviness is a result of the damage to the soft tissue that still needs repairing. And all of that typically results in an injury. There are general physical side effects as well. You might notice that your resting heart rate or blood pressure is higher than normal. Disruptions in sleep issues like insomnia or waking up feeling unrested, digestive issues, lack of appetite or weight gain, and repeated colds. When you don't allow the body to recover, your muscles and cells could be in a state of chronic inflammation. And this can reduce ATP production. ATP is where the cells of the body get their energy from and not having enough energy can have serious consequences on the body and its physiology processes that may manifest in a variety of ways. Translation, your body has to work a lot harder just to function even at the most basic level, even if you are running slow with the Maffetone method. Plus, when your body is constantly burning energy because it can't recover and return to the homeostasis, you're 
likely not giving it enough calories and you're not giving your body enough fuel for basic functions, the body will pull those resources from other parts of the body. If there isn't a balance between training, recovery, rest, and nutritional intake, the recovery process begins to fail and break down. The accumulation of excess stress leads to the production of pro-inflammatory proteins that can alter the function of your central nervous system, which can affect sleep, appetite, endocrine systems, and can affect tissue rebuilding and recovery as well as your, as well as your immune systems. Then of course, there are the mental, emotional issues that you might experience such as persistent feelings of fatigue, exhaustion, low energy throughout the day, a decline in motivation and or self-confidence, a lack of enjoyment, favorite hobbies, interests, other signs of depression, unusual moods or emotions such as agitation, anger, confusion, irritability, and restlessness. When Sinokians mess with your central nervous system, it can also lead to mood issues, elevated levels of syndicates, can have long been directly linked to depression and of course it's the kind of no-brainer. If you're constantly tired or if easy workouts feel hard then you're not going to be super motivated to get out and run right? So if you have been running using the Maffetone method and running slow you can still overtrain during base building the pr process through, through too much of volume. If you sacrifice sleep Working out more is a mistake because the big part of training is the recovery part. More is not always better. Sleep deprivation and stressing yourself just to squeeze out more workouts just defeats the whole process. So get out of your head and stop doing that. <laughs> so what do you do if you're overtraining? Once you've figured out that you're overreaching, the best thing you can do is to give yourself a break. Focus on reducing your volume and intensity, reducing the stress outside of running and training and prioritize adequate nutritional intake. If you're suffering from true overtraining symptom, you need to consult with a medical professional. That may mean stopping running entirely. That will depend on how your performance has deteriorated and your doctor will be able to help with that. With proper recovery, which includes proper nutrition and sleep, which in a 2019 study from the International Journal of Sports and Medicine determined to be the single most important factor in exercise recovery, symptoms of overtraining normally resolve within six to 12 weeks, research in the British Journal of Sports and Medicine found. Guys, very important. So when you do get back to running, you should build your volume from five to 10 minutes a day until you can handle an hour before increasing intensity, the researchers have recommended. Gradual progression is always the best way to avoid overtraining altogether. There's a lot made of the 10% rule that says you shouldn't build up the distance or pace by more than 10% each week. In my amateur opinion, I would say that overtraining is both physical, emotional, and with each comes with complex issues. Running is the goal, but there are supporting factors that come into play, such as, are you strength training? You need to, are you strength training? Because if you're not, you may find that getting injured could happen sooner than you think, or you may push yourself to a point where you don't have the muscles to be able to support the joint that causes a problem and next thing you know you're broken and you don't want that. You also want to make sure you have the right equipment. Have you updated your shoes? Uh, are you running in the right type of shoes? Do you have the right type of running shorts? Do you have the right fitting shirt? These are the types of things that you need to have because they cause stress if your shoe doesn't fit right or if the shirt isn't fitting right and it's rubbing and it's just causing problems, you're going to be stressed out from that. Honesty, you gotta be honest with your workouts. You have to be honest with yourself. How does it actually feel? Are there cues that you can be paying attention to to help you alleviate maybe some of the issues that may be coming down the pipe in terms of injuries? Rest, are you getting enough of it? Because if not, you don't wanna compromise your health because you're just trying to push out more runs. Nutrition, you wanna make sure that you're fueling your body with good whole foods. I don't necessarily just mean vegan foods. Heck, if you eat meat, that's cool. Just do what you need to do to make sure that you are healthy 
and you're getting all the nutrients that your body needs. Everyone's got dietary issues. So you need to make sure that you're doing what's right for you. And look, stress, it is super important because here's the thing. If you are in a work environment that's super stressful, you got deadlines you gotta get into, you started a new project, whatever it may be, that could cause a problem with your running because there's a lot of stress involved in that. And if you go out for a run, you could be bringing that stress along with you thinking that you wanna de-stress, but you're causing more stress on your whole body. You gotta think about all of these factors because they all come in and play in the same ballpark. If you're questioning whether a run is the right move or not because you're experiencing any of the symptoms above, ask yourself the following. How am I feeling? Is my running getting more difficult? Is this expected? How am I sleeping? How is my appetite? How is my mood? These can all be symptoms or of disruptions in both the central nervous system and the endocrine system from too much stress, too much volume. A little fatigue is a big part of the training process, but listening to your body and learning what's normal and what's not can help you avoid overdoing things. You can try using a training log as it might help, might be helpful to pinpoint when issues may come up. So it doesn't matter if you are using the Maffetone method to build up a big base. If you're running too much and you're not strength training to support all of those parts of the body, then that may be a little too much and you may break down and you may get injured. Some of the some of you younger bucks out there, you may not have a problem but with that, but as you age and get older, things aren't necessarily what they were like when you were in your 20s and 30s. <laughs> when you get into your 40s and 50s and 60s and, and above, things are a lot different and we need to make sure that we are supporting our body. So I don't care if you're running slow using the Maffetone method, zone two, if you're just base building, even if you're doing tempos or whatever, you need to make sure that you're supporting your body with everything that I've just talked about in this video. And if you find that all of these things are helpful, you wanna take a look at this video here to take it to the next level. All good things come to an end. I didn't want it to end, I wanted to continue. And I had to evaluate where I was at and I had to be honest with myself. 